Hey guys, it's another video in my series of practicing and studying for a painting I'm planning and I thought I would share a bit on how I do art studies and how I practice for final illustrations and paintings. Feel free to draw with me if you want, grab a yummy drink and I'll just be discussing my process and some tips I have with, with how I learn how to draw an object and study it. Um, let me know in the comments down below if you have any specific way um, you study or practice. I would love to hear and I think it'd be cool to learn from each other and improve our art together. So for this specific study, I really wanted to understand how blueberries are structured so I can implement them into a future painting that I'm working on. You might have seen it on my Instagram or the last video I was doing the thumbnail sketch for it, but it's a it's kind of like a double portrait of two of my characters, Strawberry Saw and Blueberry Bill, and there's a there is definitely a, like a key component of like floral elements and the, the branches of the strawberries and blueberries and I really wanted to make sure I was rendering them accurately and and that they made sense in the painting and I really wanted to understand them myself so I could kind of manipulate them and make them more stylized in a way that I would like. So I started out with a couple pencil sketches from some Pinterest references I have and really observed how the plants were structured and what their common patterns were. So this is what I commonly do when I'm trying to learn how to draw some something. First, I gather a lot of reference photos of the object. These can be your own photos that you've taken or some that you found on Pinterest or the internet. Um, I like to gather a lot of close-up shots, far away shots, different conditions of the object like different lightings or in, in this instance the different growth stages of strawberries like bloom, fruit, and just get a good variety and um, turnaround of the object so I can see it at different angles and different conditions. Step two, uh, next I like to gather some other artist's interpretation of the objects if there are any available but if you're like purely designing a object that you made up or a character that you made up it's a little more difficult to do that but I always find it really helpful with my own artistic journey to and finding my own artistic interpretations through looking at the way other artists have, have broken down um, specific objects or the human form and how they depict them depending on the style you're going for it's not necessarily always going to be realistic or completely functional or true to life but the feeling and energy other artists input into the object is really inspiring and it may help in getting the look and interpretation I want to personally achieve with my work so seeing the way that they render something may give me an idea of oh I can exaggerate something like that I can make the leaves curl a little bit I can mess with the colors a little bit it just gives me a launching point to help me from like not just copying what I see from life but helping to put my own interpretation and own twist on what I'm drawing or painting. And then step three, then I just get to drawing and painting. First, draw just drawing the solo plant and then possibly putting it into a context of an environment or character and eventually just begin to pull from my sketches and visual knowledge and draw them from memory and really cementing my understanding of the object structure. I didn't necessarily do that in this video because I was like running low on time and I just needed like a general knowledge of the plant, but I always find it really helpful to continue to draw this object that you're struggling with or learning, kind of force yourself to pull from your own memory and really kind of cement that understanding of the object and I feel like working from memory also allows uh, your interpretation and if you forgot exactly how something looks the way you do shortcuts or add in more information kind of lends itself to building your own style in interpreting objects around you. And then step four I wanted to include if I don't have time to go into like super in-depth with these studies uh, for like a piece of work or like a painting of some sort. If I need like a super specific reference for an object, I usually just make it through my own like posing and taking photos of myself or collaging something together in Photoshop and kind of making like a mock-up of what I need reference for. Moving on to this actual study. With blueberries specifically, I noticed that the stems were more like branches of a bush. They were more angular and the blueberries grow in bunches across the stems. And as I'm doing this, I'm making mental notes and visual notes, aka sketches, reminding me how the typical look of the plant is and so that I can manipulate and exaggerate the rules in the final painting and yet still make it look like the blueberry and resemble the plant. 
Understanding the realistic true form helps you stylize and improv in future work. And that's why I really like to do studies of things I'm unfamiliar with or haven't really drawn before, but still want to include in a painting. Also, specifically with the subject, I want I wanted to understand each stage of the blueberry plant from blossom to fruit so that I can have a variety in what I want to include in my painting. By the way, I think I mentioned this before, but blueberry blossoms are absolutely beautiful and I would love to make a whole painting of them with blueberry bill just like a smaller portrait just his like a figure of him and then just being surrounded by blueberry blossoms that'd be just such a fun thing to paint or to just do like a couple acrylic painting studies of the blossoms and said that would also be really helpful and just kind of indulgent because those they're just really um i didn't realize how beautiful they were until i looked it up because i knew what strawberry blossoms look like but blueberry blossoms they're they're something else so the beginning sketches in my sketchbook were pretty much purely analytical trying to understand the form and structure of the plant while painting i ended up up doing and this study is a bit more loose and up to my interpretation kind of going more towards what I was talking about before with stylizing and trying to put my own artistic voice in it um, for instance like leaving areas unfinished and describing things more simply and stylistically was my main goal and I hope I can use all these studies for the future painting I'll be doing I'll insert a little sneak peek here um, so make sure to subscribe to follow my journey of creating that painting and I think by the time of me writing this script I finished the base drawing and I'm doing the final color thumbnails for the actual canvas painting so I'm super excited I haven't painted on canvas in months so I'll definitely be needing some warm-ups for that and I plan on making some mini paintings to help myself get ready possibly of some more blueberries and strawberries or other plants I like my mom accidentally she did like a grocery order and wanted like one lemon and they gave her like two bags of lemons so maybe I'll paint some lemons but anyways I had a ton of fun with this little blueberry study uh, the base pink I used really made the blues pop and leaving a bit of the pink showing through kind of made the the painting glow it makes me want to take it into Clip Studio or Procreate and paint a little fairy or superimpose a portrait of Bill or something. I've been drawing a lot of fairies lately. Um, I haven't been sharing them a ton on like social media, but maybe soon. I don't know. It's just been fun doodling little creatures, but this li this like little branch that I painted has a lot of character even though it it's very simple. Um, and a lot of my purpose in doing this study and studies in general is to gather some confidence and awareness of how to implement the object into a piece. As I said before, I haven't painted on canvas since the end of 2022, so I am a bit hesitant and shaky with my skills since it's been so long. I feel like most artists can relate to to the fear of the blank page or fear of a blank canvas and I was almost kind of paralyzing and keeps you from starting and ultimately you get stuck in a cycle where you just don't start anything and then you feel bad because you don't start and then you feel like you're not really an artist or you're not really a painter and therefore just turns into this perpetual thing of not making paintings because you feel like you're not good enough or you haven't done it in such a long time. You're afraid to mess it up especially since it's such a big scale and a complicated scene and you're worried that it'll be a waste of time or even show you how much your skills might have possibly regressed since you stopped. I know those are fears of mine and I wonder if you guys feel the same way with the these sort of situations. And by the time of me writing the script, I just finished the color planning for the painting. Um, another sneak peek here. I don't know if it'll be the same image as what I shared before, but I don't know what I'll put here. I'm feeling a lot more confident now that I have a solid plan, but sometimes I feel embarrassed that I need this much planning and time to compose a painting. Sometimes it feels like I'm being too analytical and should just jump in, but knowing myself and what has worked in the past, the more I plan and study, the better I like the result of the painting and it's easier to paint in the actual process. I guess it just feels like a part of myself is taking the quote unquote like easy route, but I know that all the time and work I put into a painting is worth it if it makes me comfortable and I'm happy with the result. I used to not really think twice about my process of planning and sketching, um, like as Using my sketchbook to keep notes and study reference material um, was second nature to me for like most of my life, but I think I just had like a professor in university who thought it was uh, too much and encouraged me to just paint spontaneously or be looser with what I paint. But well, I do think this is beneficial from time to time and it did work when I was working from life with portraits and where I had a clear reference. Um, but when I would delve into more imagination-based world 
worlds and characters and doing more illustration stuff just spontaneously, things would become really um, stiff and frustrating. I would be constantly looking for references while I was painting and I would constantly be repainting something because I didn't think about how it would like, look with something else and it was just, it was, it was a mess. It was disorganized. Um, and that's just not the way my brain thought in creating something in my whole process. I really wanted to trust the quote unquote process, but it wasn't working at all for the style and content of work I wanted to create. Also, towards the end of my college career, I didn't have as much time to plan out pieces I was working on since I would have to do about like two to three individual pieces of work um, each week. But now that I'm stepping back into my groove and doing what feels right to me, I recognize that I love the planning and discovering process of studying different things I want to include in a painting and, and truly making my compositions intentional and impactful. I feel like one of the best art classes that I had taken, um, I think I took it in like 2021, it was online and it was like kind of like learn at your own place sort of thing. It was New Masters Academy. It was a composition class with Bill Perkins and it was like one of the best classes I took for what I really wanted to do, which is illustration and painting because it really dissected composition and how shape language, color, lighting, subject matter, like how that all comes into play and how much the way you place things, the way you light things can tell so much about a story of what you're trying to depict. And I think that class really instilled in me the intentional designer and wanting to plan things out and make things intentional and thoughtful with my work thus leading to a more, a longer um, bit of a prep process, but I really enjoy how my pieces turn out afterwards. And I know as I like continue to work that um, things might be, be become faster as I don't, I don't have to rely as much on planning and can kind of trust myself and have that confidence to just go for it. But I feel like that class, if it's still available, I don't have a new Masters Academy subscription anymore, but I recommend taking the composition class from Bill Perkins on New Masters Academy. It was super helpful and that's how I learned most of what I know now. So, but even with all this planning, yes, I'll still have last minute moves to change a painting or add something, but it's important to me that I have a solid base to work on, especially in more imaginary and creative works that require more effort. However, I would love to hear from you guys. When you plan to do a finished painting or piece, do you like to just jump in and start painting and see where it goes from there? Or are you more like me where you plan everything out and thumbnail and test things out? Let me know in the comments. I really am interested to hear your guys' uh, process and how you create artwork. I was also wondering if you guys would be interested if I live stream some of my painting process, maybe for this painting or for some like future paintings, but I think it'd be fun as I'm um, working on it to document it through streaming here on YouTube so you can really see like the full process and like no cuts where we could just hang out and I could answer questions or just provide some company to you guys as you work on your own drawings and paintings. And I could upload the stream later for people to watch if they missed it. I've read some content feedback from you guys and a lot of you really like the longer format videos. So I thought it'd be fun to try out live streaming and just add that as another thing for you guys to enjoy. Anyways, back to this painting, <laughs> a bit of a tangent, but like I said, I really enjoyed how this turned out. Um, whenever I strike an idea and color composition like this, it always inspires me to do more and propels more ideas. I haven't necessarily been in an art block like I discussed in my last video, but honestly just trying to find the time and allowing myself to create, especially with um, trying to make art like a business and a job it's been really difficult working around administrative tasks and like content creation tasks to just sit down and draw and to create artwork and it becomes disheart disheartening when it's been a couple of days and I haven't been able to allow myself to draw but I'm hoping that becomes easier and I'm able to allow myself more time but I just watched a video last night from Lil Starner here on YouTube and she was talking about how so much of her work as a full-time artist currently was doing sales, marketing, and other like non-art creation things. Her time for art had really diminished and it wasn't making her feel that great. And the idea 
that since an art business relies on the artist to keep going, it's hard to just stop for two weeks to rest or indulge into just making art for fear of missing out on like sponsorship or brand opportunities or market invitations. And I can really relate to what she was expressing, not as extreme, but with having to pack orders, edit videos, email, um, doing the occasional customer support and constantly planning what to do next can be, can be very time consuming and exhausting, li leaving little time time and energy to do what we love in the first place and to do what propels this this job and this business um, without art like uh, this wouldn't be happening so don't get me wrong I'm extremely grateful to have the ability and opportunity to build my business and social media with the support of my family but it's a lot of maintenance and organizational work for one person on top of trying to maintain a art practice there's no one telling you what to do what to post what to draw what to make or well it's kind of a good thing I kind of don't like to be told what to draw or paint but moving on from that uh what sponsorships to accept what kind of business moves to do you're your own boss which is so freeing yet so scary when you have to make all of these decisions and figure out what you should do next to keep people watching and supporting you and if views are falling not as many people are engaging with your content it can seriously mess with your mental health and view of yourself as an artist and affect your income so it just leaves a lot of stress which ties back into the whole confidence thing with starting this painting there is a whole nother level of needing the painting to be a success and figuring out how many ways i can create content from a painting which is a whole lot more pressure which makes painting which makes planning even more crucial and important to my art making process. Making a list of reels footage I can take, documenting the whole process for YouTube, creating stickers and prints based off the painting. That creates monetizable things for at least a month, but you always have to think ahead, which is both exciting and overwhelming. And you wanna have variety with what you post, unless your audience will like support you in any way and you basically post the same type of artwork all the time, which I guess I kind of do with like the cowboy stuff. I like to have like different things things like showing sketches from my sketchbook and then more finished things kind of having a content variety like that and I know it becomes easier over time or at least that's what I keep on telling myself but I'm still getting used to art creation and content creation and the balance I want to have between them but I feel like so much of my actual art creation is, is slipping along with my actual art skills and it becomes stressful when I haven't drawn in a couple of days and realize that I don't make as much art I don't make as much art as um when I was in school so I know I'll eventually figure it out or find a better system and creation process but for now it's a lot of trial and error and I appreciate every single one of you that has, su has supported my channel my Instagram my shop and like my characters and showed interest towards them um there's not a day that goes by that I'm not grateful for your guys' support, love, and interest towards my work. And I want nothing more than to continue to create for you guys and create more things and create more higher quality content. And I really appreciate you all being so patient as I figure things out. We'll get there one day and I hope it'll at least be a bit interesting to you guys as I get through it but yeah sorry things kind of ended up on a bit of a stressful note but I wanted to be honest with you guys on how I'm feeling and what my thoughts are currently even though I do feel a bit of pressure and stress with the lack of art making in my current schedule um, I know things will lighten up and I'm reprioritizing things in my schedule and making sure I have like a solid few hours in the morning to make some art and therefore have better things to show you guys and more content for you guys in general so and i'm also super excited to start working on this new painting i haven't painted in forever at this scale so that's also gonna be super fun so make sure to subscribe if you want to follow more of my journey of making um this painting i keep on alluding to um i'm uploading twice a week right now testing out the waters and seeing how much i can handle with editing but follow me on instagram for more frequent posts and updates regarding my sketchbook and artwork and shop stuff and you can also subscribe to my email newsletter if you're interested in future discounts and updates regarding my shop. I'm planning July's update right now and I think you guys are really gonna love the theme. It's definitely gonna really delve into Strawberry Saw and Blueberry Bill and you guys seem to be really interested in them. So I'm excited to get that out to you guys. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it and can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Hope your summer is going well. Enjoy some blueberries and take care.